whatever that is in here. And just let it be. It will be. It will be.
uh, regarding the fires. I want to welcome everybody uh, to our annual Indigenous Peoples Day celebration, commemoration, in which we honor our ancestors, and a day of recognizing and reconciling and, and uh, reclaiming that there was once ours and is ours. So I'd like to uh, just kind of 
uh, bring to the attention that we are in a time of COVID, but it is more of a reason why we must celebrate and recognize our ancestors because we have to understand that through these difficult times, it is a understanding of connection, an intersectionality of our past, our present, and our future that brings meaning. I also want to uh, mention a couple of things. I am very glad that today, Tonazin has given us the most gorgeous of days. As you see, the day is not too, too warm, too hot, too cold. But we have celebrated this day, rain, fire, or flood. For over 21 years, we have celebrated it, Indigenous People Day. My good friend, Val Shadow Hawk, which is here with us today. Uh, and he will be, he will be here uh, uh, singing and, and dancing. Uh, I want to also recognize uh, Jonathan El Venado and uh, the, the beautiful dancer Delia. And hopefully he'll tell us a little bit of how he got that name, perhaps. <laughs> uh, but it is a great day for us, and I also want to um, uh, bring attention to La Señora Medina, which has been with us for many years, and she opens these events with the blessing. La Raza Cosmica, an understanding that we are a people of the four directions. Um, so, in saying that, uh, I, on the way over here this morning, I noticed that also, like uh, many people, they call them essential workers. The farm workers were out in the fields doing what they do, making sure that, that the fruits and vegetables that we often have are at the table. The essential workers that work as domestic workers, they clean the hotels and the motels, that do all the work that is often overlooked. This day belongs to them, the people, the descendants of the uh, relocated areas we call uh, uh, just places that have been forgotten. It gives me sadness sometimes when I talk about it, but it's important to understand that we often forget the, the great traditions of our people, and that's what this day is very much about. I want to uh, uh, say that this day, uh, I want to to recognize a resolution that was um, brought forth just recently by San Joaquin Delta College, and it is a landmark resolution that recognizes the Native people, the First Nation people of this country before it was this country. So I want to read part of that to you uh, so that people know what is being said about this land, the land of the Yakuts, the land of the Chichimex, the land of the people that once stood here, died here, fished here, farmed here, and are still here. So it's with my uh, good colleague, my friend, uh, Ricardo Aguilar, if he would come forward so I could kind of... Uh, get some assistance in leading this resolution, if you will. This resolution, Resolution 20-08, Resolution Recognizing California Native American Day and Native American Heritage Month. Whereas the indigenous people of California, including the native peoples of this region, the Yakuts, the Plains, the Miwok, Potwin, the Nesmin, each have a diverse and peaceful existence that has lasted for many thousands of years, and there are now more than 100 recognized tribes in California, more than any other state in the nation. Whereas Native American peoples have been indigenous to the San Joaquin Valley and throughout history and into current day have made significant contributions in areas such as education, arts, environmental, state worship, 
government, science, medicine, entertainment, literature, sports, and military, thereby adding to the vibrant of the United States of America and California. Whereas throughout the history of the Americas, First Nations people have been an integral part of the American character, and despite tremendous adversity, they have endured and retained invaluable political, social, and moral presence, and have flourished with vibrant cultures and rich traditions. Now therefore be it resolved and ordered that the San Joaquin Delta College Community Community College District hereby adopt resolution number 20-08 in order to show our commitment to the work to the working more, and working more closely with the native communities in our district and surrounding areas in order to support native students, employees, and community success, as well as to honor and recognize Native American people and tribes, including the Yakut, the Plains Miwok, Potwin, the Nesman tribes, on California Native American Day on September 25th, 2020, and hereby honors and recognizes the month of November 2020 as Native American Heritage Month to mark the achievement and contributions of indigenous peoples in California and in the United States. So that is the message of the day. Muchas gracias,
real quick, yeah. I want to introduce our court. Uh, we have been dancing, offering, and sharing, most likely sharing our culture with each other from our Tamashians. Uh, yeah, they're ready in front of us, ahead of us, waiting for us to be offering once again together what they share us before they passed away, before they went on and on and on. One day we'll be all together sharing again, offering again. Likewise, we're doing it right now. So, God, bless you, Kamati. And over here, drumming, we have Jorge. He's been offering with me about eight years. Uh, they already have their own kapuli, means group, tribe. Um, but once again, we keep on sharing together, which is the, the main thing. Even though somebody might be apart from you, but if, they keep, if we keep on the same route, on the same way, on the same path, we're still together. The question was, and, and I answer it, why is it important to celebrate Indigenous Day? One answer was, why not? And the other answer was, why is it to celebrate Indigenous Day when you can actually be proud of it every day? So, that's one thing I told them. Y quiero dar las gracias a Jorge for being with me. Same thing, cuando tú te ayudas con Federico, ya sabe. And the same thing as, as I call him, hey, I, I have an offering, we have an offering at Delta College. Would you be able to? He said, yes. So the thing is, if you keep sharing, even though you're a different paths, if you keep sharing together, you will never be apart from each other. And last but not least, for smokers, as Amadora, Linda, with that which I've been knowing for, I honestly know how many years, but it's been long. And she's the one who called me Venado. Dear, why uh, I do the deer dance, but doing the deer dance where, where she comes from, Yaki, Yaki native people, it's not just being the Venado, it's feeling, enjoying, and transmitting what you're actually doing, like the way we do. When we get our trajes on, we don't put our traje on, we become a master, a machica. That's the difference. We don't wear the stuff. The stuff wears us. No nos vestimos. El traje nos viste a nosotros. Plasca Mati, tío, machica. Before we hand over, first of all, once again, I'd like to thank Delta College student body and the community of Delta College. But first of all, the four cardinal directors I want to thank. The purpose of us being here. Earth, Wind, and Fire had it pretty much together. They forgot the water. <laughs> and um, number one, uh, thank you, Mr. Moreno and his people companion, Professor. Um, so, uh, Ricardo Aguilar. Ricardo Aguilar, for always supporting us and keeping us here. The people that are here were meant to be here for a purpose. Um, I, I, we believe in that. Um, not everybody is meant or destined to be somewhere at some time. But uh, if you're here, you were meant to be here at this time, at this, at this right precise time. You were for a we have something that we want to share before we bring in our beautiful brothers, our Native brothers, our uh, Native American brothers. Um, it's a song, and it's about the the heaviness that a lot of us are feeling. Number one, of being isolated because of all the COVID and other things that are happening on your life. We have a lot of um, 
fought brother just recently passed. And uh, I have a tail meet of cousins and aunts that have passed from this program. And um, I'm sure everybody has been touched in some kind of way, either financially, emotionally, spiritually. But being touched through that and being told that we can't congregate and that we have to remain separate, we don't have to remain separate in, in here, in our hearts, and our spirituality, and in what we offer. And you go outside and you find yourself in your home, but you're not. You're surrounded with those people who have left this, this term here on this map. But they're not gone. They're not gone. They're somewhere. And they're there. And you just have to call on them. And you're going to feel that energy in that place. There's something that's called Shibuya, and it's a song about a flower. But what it's referring to is a flower in your heart to keep it alive. And it's, um, see that flower? Shibuya. Shibuya wa yi sochi, Shibuya wa yi no yolo, Pampa ni ni la sotla, Pampa ni ni la sotla, Ni te ni shi no yolo. Shikie wa yi sochi, Shikie wa yi no yolo, Pampa ni ni la sotla, Pampa ni ni la sotla, Ni te ni Cuida, por favor, cuida tu corazón, porque nos queremos, porque te queremos con todo el corazón. Uh, I would like to, to present uh, Gerald Arnett to share a couple of uh, things. He's the founder of Indigenous People's Adjustment Center. He'd like to share a couple of words about the center that he has started up in the community. He is a student here at Delta College, and he was the founding member and the uh, president of Talking Spirits. So, um, Mr. Arnett. Good morning to everybody. My name is Darrell. Uh, I'm one of the California natives here. I was born in uh, Fort Bigelow, California, uh, Shoshone, Paiute River. And uh, one of the things that uh, I started doing was uh, started looking out for, for myself and, and learning uh, what life is really about. And it took me a while to get everything together. But uh, before, I'd like to recognize all the native people from this region, the Gulf Strip, the Plain Kiwa, the Fatuin, and the Vietnam. I'd like to thank the ASPC Social Justice Committee for allowing us this opportunity to celebrate our indigenous people. Uh, and I'd like to thank all of the indigenous people who traveled here today. And I'd like to thank the city of Stockton for helping us start the Indigenous People Adjustment Program, getting our business license to develop an aftercare facility. Uh, this aftercare facility is for those people who are having a hard time with their, their uh, addiction, the alcohol and drugs that are causing them, their families to break down. And uh, we want to help uh, rebuild the, the family structure in a traditional and cultural way. Uh, the Indigenous People Adjustment Program is a culturally based program where we, we plan to help the, the Native Americans learn how to get back and learn, learn their culture and get, get off of the streets and start learning the traditional ways, the culture. And uh, we, we plan to build a, uh, an aftercare facility outside of the city limits so that we can have some traditional land 
so that we could have a place where we could do traditional gardening, start farming, and help the kids learn how to plant their own gardens. And, and uh, we would like to start uh, helping people out in a, in a better way uh, in life. Because a lot of us have, uh, like myself, I have personally uh, been through the problems of, of, of a broken home. And uh, it, was, it was through addiction that uh, I struggled and I learned how to change my way by uh, listening finally and uh, not doing all the talking anymore and start listening. And then, uh, I'd like to thank the uh, Three Rivers Indian Lodge out there in Nantaka for helping me uh, find another direction in, in a cultural way. Uh, one of the people that I really respect to is Mr. Val Chatterhawk. He's going to be up here in a minute. And he taught me a lot as far as the uh, cultural direction, the tradition, and the sacred ways. And I really respect everything that I've learned about all of the, the things that the Native Americans do. The grass dancers here, they, they are traditional dancers. They, they go out there and they dance. They, they knock the grass down so that the women can come through. And then the, the grass is all out and level. That's why they're, they're the grass dancers, they knock the grass down because we protect our women. And then they, they, they dance, and the, their dances are very, very sacred. Everything, every feather, every item has a, has a special meaning. And Mr. Shadowhawk would probably be uh, you know, really uh, generous in, in his uh, beliefs about uh, what the purpose is for everything is. And there's a lot of uh, things I, I still have to learn because I did a lot of uh, uh, misguidance in my life by uh, choosing to do drugs and alcohol and hanging out with the wrong people. But now that I've had pain, I have been uh, clean for 10 years and I'm really glad that I had the opportunity to come up here and, and do what I do and just be an example you know, that you can actually change your life and you don't have to go out there and do these things anymore. I started this program on the table is over there. That's Nora. She is our secretary. She's our planning secretary. And she helps us do a lot of development. We have an office downtown. I have business cards over here directly. And a lot of information on our program. So I now I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to uh, Mr. Moreno. And thank you, Mr. Moreno, for this opportunity today. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Gerald. Uh, so if you find any chance you're downtown, feel free to go visit uh, Mr. Arnett. Go say hello. He's uh, always very welcoming, and he's always uh, has a lot of uh, uh, good, good things to share with you. And um, it's a very meaningful uh, conversation that you'll have if you have a chance to go visit Mr. Arnett. I want to uh, uh, quickly recognize some very important people that are here. Um, a while back ago, we were worried, I was worried whether we were going to have this event. It looked like it wasn't going to happen because of uh, what is going on with social distancing and all the regulations. And I shared that with two of the mujeres, which I believe are really the engine of what makes everything work. Uh, and I shared that with uh, Tara and uh, Professor Adriana Broger. And they, they, they said, no, 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 we can do this. And I said, well, how are we going to do this? And, she, and, and, and both of them, they said, well, we're going to broadcast this. We can do it. And uh, they filled my heart up with animo, with ganas. And I said, you know, I'm just going to turn it over to the people that know most. And that is La Mujeres, that they're the engines of everything. So, muchas gracias, Adriana Broger, Tara, she's our, our journalism instructor. Um, I want to also thank uh, ASCC, the student government, for uh, making this happen as far as their support and the CAPS committee. Some of the CAPS members might be out here. Muchas gracias. Thank you for making this happen. And all of the social justice committee, which are behind everything that, that uh, seems to be moving nowadays. So here's one of the social justice members, our chairman, Mr. Aguilar over here one of the, the incredible people on our campus. So, uh, with no further ado, but oh, I almost forgot. Um, 
We do have our guest speaker, uh, Wayland Coates. With no further ado, I'd like to turn it over to Mr. Shadow Hawk, who's been with us for over 21 years. Okay, let's sit down. In the dark, oh, okay. I'm Val Shadowhawk, Cree, Black Feet, Choctaw and Missouri tribes, and uh, live over in Mur Murphy's these days. Get this microphone out of the stand. Can't get it tall enough for me. Uh -huh. So, all you good people that are watching, I want to uh, first of all thank uh, our brothers and sisters to the south here. It's good to see them. Especially, uh, I want to give Grandma Cobb, Mama Cobb, a big acknowledge. We always acknowledge our elders, uh, mothers, grandmas, aunties. Um, just, to, just so you know, my mom passed away on August first part of all this. It wasn't due to COVID. She just, uh, it was time for her to go home to the ancestors. And I felt her today. She had been to some of these gatherings with me here in California. She lived in Kansas, but she'd come out here and go powwow with me and the boys. Not the boys that are here, some of the other boys that I've introduced from previous, the Cisneros family that lives in Stockton. We have a number of families that are part of this group, the Young Eagle Spirit Dancers. And uh, Gerald, Brother Gerald, Arnett was speaking about us a moment ago. He is definitely someone I know real well from the Talking Spirits Club that was also responsible for us being here, along with Brother Mario Moreno, who we've known each other. And I told the boys here, uh, Tristan and Wyatt, that we've been doing this for two decades now, 21 years. Come right in the same spot, no matter what, come rain, come shine, and the weather's perfect for this. So we're grateful for you that are watching and being part of this, even though we can't see you physically. We're going to share this powwow dancing with you. A brother here with the Mexica dancers. Oh, Chima Witch. Okay, so we're going to get right into this. And then as we uh, go into this program, as we always do, I stop and explain a few things about what it is, what clothing we're wearing, what it means, the meaning of that drum. You notice our brothers and sisters here that dance so well with that drum. They are drummers in that way, that drum with that uh, cadence of the Mexica people. But those of us who come from the upper 48 are powwow dancers. Powwow is an Algonquin word for what we do. It means the dance, the gathering. Um, all relative, though, including our relatives from Northern California, we use the clapper sticks. Their drum relates to Mother Earth with one big stick when they go into that roundhouse, that circle roundhouse, and they hit that Mother Earth with that cadence the same way. These drummers in the Mexica dance with two sticks. Us powwow singers, singers use one stick. We have two styles basically out of the powwow world, northern plains and southern plains, and we'll give you samples of both of those. But I want to introduce you to Wyatt and Tristan Rodolfi. They're going to be bringing in our dancers here, the Young Eagle Spirit Dancers. The Young Eagle Spirit Dancers who couldn't be here just the same. You are here with us in spirit. This is Wyatt. He's sitting at the drum right now, Wyatt Rodolfi. And his big brother, Tristan, they'll be dancing around that drum. I'll be singing for them, bringing them in in a grass dance song. Gerald spoke about the grass dance. Just so you know, in short, the grass dance comes from the Umaha people of the Ponca clan over out of Macy, Nebraska. That's a central a plains, northern plains style. And those of us who have northern plains relatives, such as yours truly here, plains, Cree, and Blackfeet, we also do that dance, that grass dance, but we acknowledge that it came originally out of uh, Central Plains, the Northern Plains, Central and Northern Plains, by way of the Umaha of the Ponca clan. We Creek people have our own story about that grass dance too, and I'll get in and tell that a little bit later. But it has to do with the grass, the prairie grass, because the people follow the herds of the bison, the great bison thing. Actually, I just recently found out that bisons, there were some bisons that were found in Mendocino County long ago. They went all the way to California. I thought they stopped at Arizona. I didn't know that, so that's something new for me, too. We always learn something new out there. So the bison, the great bison herds, all across Great Turtle Island, <clears throat> they extended well into uh, Canada, up into the uh, uh, upper part of Canada, up almost into Alaska, and as far south as Georgia. They had buffalo down there, too, a woodlands buffalo that wasn't as big as the plains buffalo, the one you see out of uh, Yellowstone. And I have ancestry out of Yellowstone on my mom's side. In Plains Creek, they came out of Canada and migrated all the way down 
originally out of Canada, but migrated all the way into Wyoming, Colorado, and then into Oklahoma. But they're originally Plains Cree. And one of the Plains Cree tree chiefs that you may not know about him, Mish Tahemisqua, his name was Big Bear. And he was a big man and uh, a great warrior who fought against uh, the Queen's people of England when they settled into Canada to keep the, the, the Plains, all the Plains people there, all of the First Nations, and uh, free from that colonization. So that's a little history for you. You can look up. Okay, so anyway, we're going to get into this first song. I'm going to bring the boys in here right around that drum, central to the circle. We'll make our circle right here on this uh, upper part. We don't call it a stage because it's all Mother Earth. We're going to dance right here. So thank you. Young Eagle Spirit Dancers, based out of Stockton. Give them a big round of applause. Blackfeet Nation, that originally comes from Blackfoot Crossing, and um, it's a grass dance song made by the Bakers, who are all so, sing with the uh, Mandaree singers, they know where that song comes from. Uh, that style just comes from the uh, upper Missouri, and again, that's grass dance country, that's plains country, and the people that follow the herds of history that I uh, briefly spoke of, herds of the buffalo, the moose, the elk, especially the buffalo, that grass is what that animal subsists on. And um, I have here on my dance stick a breed of sweet grass that comes from Montana. It's a big breed of sweet grass that was picked by a friend, a uh, good friend, uh, sung at drum within the years past, uh, Gary Middlerider Jr. And he's Blackfeet out of Bear Butte, Montana. That's where that comes from. That keeps the story of that buffalo alive there. And um, that's for all the nations that subsist on that buffalo. The buffalo has four stomachs, so it can digest all of the vitamins out of that grass to become so strong and healthy. It gives health and wealth to the people. It's a staff of life. Even our, re our relatives down in the southwest, bordering Mexico, they have the buffalo dance. And um, again, they honor that, that grass, that sweet grass that's right there. On my dance stick, I have two primary eagle feathers, golden eagle. Plains people generally honor the golden eagle. And I know that's true of our Mexica relatives too. When you see the Mexican flag, you see golden eagle on there, on the cactus. Has to do with their story of going into Tenochtitlan. You see that eagle on the cactus there? 
This, this bird is universal to the primary part of First Nations people. But there's in Alaska, they recognize the bald eagle and especially the raven, so I also give them their acknowledgement in that. But these eagle feathers guide me in my dancing. <clears throat> the black and white, that black and white is something that came to me in dream. And I can share that with you. When this outfit that I wear came to me, came to me because of an ancestor who was a dog soldier, this way that I dance with this circle of feathers on my head. A hawk, hawk clan, the red tail hawk, messenger. And I have a red tail hawk. When I'm dancing around here, if you want to pan in on it, you'll see it on my bustle, on my dance bustle, the circle of bustles on my feather. Uh, red tail, red tail hawk is a messenger that comes with a beautiful message for all that hear it. And we have lots of red tail hawks that circle this beautiful campus here, all this land. We see that as eagle's little brother. Uh, the eagle in Blackfoot is Pita. In Cree, the eagle is Mikwan, Mikwana. And one feather is Mikwan, but the whole bunch, or two of them, is Mikwana. And that's Pita in Blackfoot, eagle, golden eagle. So that takes our prayers up, the great mystery. When we dance, like these boys here, give them a moment to dance. You notice, if you want to get up and walk around, boys, pretend that we have a lot of people here just the same. Give them a little passion show. Let them see your outfit. They got right there in their uh, wapeshas, their roaches. The wapesha is a Lakota word, or the Sioux word, for the grass. Tristan and Wyatt are wearing those wapeshas and they're uh, on their heads. They're tied right into their scout box or tied around their, their, uh, their necks. And they have two primary eagle feathers in those wapeshas, those grass. It's like the grass, wapesha. Peishi in the Lakota language. Peishi, like the grass. We're going to give you another sample of this dancing from our representing the young eagle spirit dancers. These boys are going to school in Lodi over at Tokai School in Lodi right now. But they're out of Stockton originally, and we represent this, this greater Stockton area. I live in Murphy's these days over in the foothills. I come down here from time to time, as we are today, to get together with you and enjoy this dance, enjoy this beautiful day. And it is perfect out here. So ready for another dance, boys? Okay, we're going to give another grass dance song. Crow hop on this one. Got a single beat. I'll explain just in short. <clears throat> the crow hops around when it's not flying. Big brother to the crow is raven. They're the Corbett family. Crows and ravens are really smart animals, and they eat everything. They're omnivorous, so they eat meat, they eat uh, vegetables, fruit. And uh, we saw a bunch of crows on the way here that were feeding on snails. So they like that escargot, too. So we're going to give these boys a crow hop. Crow hop's a victory song, too, by the way, of our people, especially the Ojibwe's in, that, in the plains, northern plains, and especially the crow people, the Apsaloka people. It comes from them, that crow hop. They're the bird people. And so I'll tell you a story about that when we finish this dance. Crow hop, boys. story as I promised. Um, back in the Batlands country, the Lakota, the Siouan speakers of the Oglala, and their allies, the Cheyenne. Cheyenne are rela related directly to the Cree and Ojibwe. Cheyenne means little Cree. In their language, they call themselves Wichistas. And the Arapaho, they were part of that alliance that fought at the end of June against Custer 7 Cavalry. They defeated him in about half an hour, decisively. The, the Crow and the Arikara had scouts that fought with the 7 Cavalry, but at least more or less were scouts for the 7 Cavalry. They had been traditional enemies of the Lakota, Cheyenne, and Arapaho, so they took the opportunity to scout because they were their traditional enemies. They had a vision of what was going to happen before that. It went around through the camps in the Crow Nation. Also, on the Lakota side, Sitting Bull had had a vision too. And that vision is famously known as Soldiers Upside Down. 
he had given 50 bits of flesh during Sundance, the hottest time of year, which had just finished not long ago here. One of our seven sacred rites, Sundance. During that Sundance, after giving 50 bits of flesh on the left, 50 bits of flesh on the right, and going into a vision, said sitting bull, Tatanka Yotanka, came out and told the people, you're going to be victorious. You're going to be victorious. These are going to be gifts from Kantanka. Traditional Northern Plains dancer carries many items, <clears throat> especially a dance stick. I don't carry a shield. And normally they'll have a shield, a fan, usually an eagle or hawk, an eagle staff. This eagle staff matches my clothing and the stripes on the clothing. My medicine in this dance came to me in the dream time, including my shakers. You notice my boys, they wear more contemporary metal bells, and that's cool. It sounds good. They have the sleigh bells, cowbells. But I saw in my vision, in the old, the old time, I had this, I went to one of my, uh, my adopted dad. He was Yaki and Comanche, World War II veterans. I told him on my dream, he says, the ancestors want you to do that. At that time, I was dancing to honor my southern relatives, the Choctaws and the Cherokees and the, and the um, Yaquis and um, all the other folks that uh, tribes that don't come from that are southern. And uh, on the Missouri is on my dad's side. Missouri is old Tom Missouri is there today in Oklahoma, Red Rock, Oklahoma, but they came out of uh, Iowa and Missouri. And they didn't follow that southern way too. So I was dancing that way then. Different style than what you see here. This is Northern Plains. This clothing represents the Cree and the Blackfeet out of the north, the great north. And um, we were a circle of bustles. That bustle of feathers was given to us again by the Omaha. The original bustle was a small round one. In the back of my bustle, I have, and put your camera on that, there's a red tail in there, red tail hawk with red tail feathers. In Blackfeet, we say, Mikuk Shuye Pita Utuk. Mikuk Shuye Pita is the hawk. Mikuk Shuye Pita, that's the hawk, the eagle's little brother. Mikuk Shuye Pita Utuk is the shadow. Utuk is the shadow. I'm six foot six, so I make a big shadow, and that's part of the name. <laughs> so, but the stripes were in the dream. That stripe is a contrast of day and night. That stripe is a contrast of male and female. That stripe is a contrast between heat and cold. It's all the contrast in life. Good and evil. Uh, negative, positive. It's what that stripe represents. Life and death cycle. Which we continue on though, in our way. There's no death, there's no end in death. There's no reason to fear it. Um, a little bit more about my outfit. The real Ojibwe's. We got this idea from our Ojibwe relatives on my anklets here. They, the Ojibwe warriors would put those Angora goat anklets that drug the ground so that the enemies wouldn't track them. They drag them. The Comanches, they wore a moccasin which had a long uh, fringe, about 18 inches out the heel, that would cover their tracks when they were walking so the enemy wouldn't track them. The shakers I wear, I was in that dream I had too. No bells. It was old school. They didn't have bells in the old, old time. No sense of metal, refined metal was not part of their way. So I honor them old ones, the grandpas and grandmas. And uh, so those shakers. I was dancing with bells when I had that dream. But the old one I saw in my dream had these shakers like the chachayotes, our relatives dance. More natural. When I hear that, that makes me feel good. Yeah. So that's a little bit about my outfit and what it means. The leathers are deer. Our relatives all across Great Turtle Island subsist on deer meat. And that's kind of a general and universal meat that we subsist on, is deer. Um, I heard the Spanish word for deer earlier from my brother here, venado. <laughs> deer. The Yaki do a deer dance, and uh, we honor that deer. And the California relatives hunt the deer. When they're dancing in that roundhouse, they are depicting their hunting skills when they hunt for the turkey and hunt for the deer and other animals like that. So that's a little bit about my outfit and how it relates to our relatives across Great Turtle Island. I want to get into this first dance. I'm going to put this microphone down. I want to ask Mario if he could uh, key up that box just to number two. Might want to hold a microphone to it right against it so they can hear it. Now, boys, if you want to come dance with me, you can. This is a traditional plains dance. Imagine about at least eight to ten more guys like me dancing this way, and I'll 
tell you that this is a dance that was done in a long time ago where the men were the ones that came into the circle and the women stood on the outside and gave that and I heard my sister here give that little sound that's a woman sound that's a woman sound but you know it's universal you hear tribal women from Africa doing that you hear tribal women from Asia doing that you hear tribal women from uh, Middle East the Middle East doing that you hear tribal women from Europe even doing that same sound isn't that something okay here we go honors the women. Uh, they brought us to the drum by birth, us fellows. So they stand behind. Not a bad place to be because they're guiding us to that. As our mothers, grandmas, on the other side too, guide us in our lives. We look to mother's water from birth through life. Water gives life. And so not long ago in Standing Rock, 
the water protectors. Ironically, many of the people that they were fighting to protect the water for were attacking them. And so today we still continue to dance knowing that we have a lot of work to do. So in that being, we think about that when we dance. So every step is a prayer. We feel that drum. So when I dance around out here, it's by myself, I'm not alone. The ancestors are there too. It's heartbeat. Okay boys, that will be crow hop. And again, all you good people that are watching, thank you for hanging in there with us and watching and enjoying. And we pray that you'll get something out of this, out of the various dances you've seen here by our Mashika brothers and sisters. And yours truly with our boys here from the Young Eagle Spirit Dancers. Um, I want to mention one inspiration for our group. She left us about four years ago, Caroline Wilson of the Lakota and Apache and Mashika. And out of South Dakota, her relatives from Wakpala, South Dakota. So Caroline Wilson passed that drum that you see there on to us to use for teaching and to perpetuate what we are, indigenous people. All right, we ready, boys? Continuing to do this. So next year, no matter what, we shall be back. I want to thank, want to thank Brother Mario for doing this. Just keep on keeping on. When you're taking in our words and our songs, our dancing, again, Raise your vibration with that. Be together with your family. Be together with your friends, you know. 
Don't be afraid. There's nothing to fear. Lose the fear. It's a choice between fear and love. Love doesn't always have to be that warm and fuzzy thing you think about. It can be, but it's beyond that. It's no fear. So that's the main thing I would tell you while you're at home. Thinking about being here on this campus. Pray and visualize yourself coming back here. You will. You'll be back. This ain't going to last forever. Oh! 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 I heard once from Henry Tui. Think and come. He's already one step ahead of us, waiting for us. To share again what we are doing. He said, if you can walk, you can dance. Right? I was like, yeah. And he said, if you can talk, you can sing. I was like, nah, I don't think so. <laughs> That's not true. I've tried it many times. It doesn't work that way. <laughs> so, I'm going to tell you guys, invite you guys to gather around, gather, wave, quad, con Linda, con Maestro Sebastiani. Maestro Moreno, ustedes también. I want to invite everybody. Like they, like they said, like he said, once if you can walk, you can dance. We have sanitized yourself. We should be fine. After dancing, please don't touch your face. Don't touch anything. After you actually sanitize your hands. So let's do it that way. Everyone is going to start with left foot. We invite you too. We invite you too. So come on. Come on, this way. And that way, we'll be ending our friendship. Yeah.
the big energy. So now, Mark Willie, at the Dokali! gonna come back. Everything will come back. Tonanchi, Tonanchi, Kladigi, Klasu Kamati. Atako Koli, Stikwase! everybody coming by and if you're at home thank you for for tuning in and uh every day is indigenous people's day in our hearts in our minds and in, in what we do it's always with us so until next year muchas gracias